Southwest China, one of nature's greatest secrets. Snow-capped mountains, temperate valleys, and tropical jungles are home to a spectacular array of wildlife. Approximately half of China's birds and mammals live in this tiny region. Many found nowhere else on Earth. But this Garden of Eden has a hostile neighbor, a place where all life struggles to survive. And as the world's greatest mountain range continues to rise, this secret oasis and its host of creatures somehow thrive. For centuries, China has been the most populated place on the planet. With around one and a half billion people competing for resources, nature often comes off second best. Over recent years, climate change and erosion has also had an adverse effect, turning around 30% of China's land into desert. These dry, desolate zones increase by two and a half thousand square kilometers each year. But tucked away in China's southwest corner is a hidden oasis unlike any other. Yunnan province alone has as much flowering plant diversity as the rest of the northern hemisphere put together. The wildlife here is just as abundant. With less than 4% of the country's landmass, it's home to almost half of China's creatures. Remarkably, this vast array of life is all down to a geological fault created by one of the most powerful forces of nature. As the Himalayas continue to rise and drive north, at their eastern end in southwest China, they've taken on a very different, life-nurturing route. Yunnan province varies in altitude, from lowland river valleys to snow-clad mountainous peaks. Meltwater rivers from the Tibetan plateau meander through the lower forested valleys. This region is the ideal habitat for one of the biggest monkeys in Asia. Tibetan macaques are the largest of all macaque species. Also known as Chinese stump-tailed macaques, their bodies are around 70 centimeters long and they can weigh in excess of 30 kilos. Living in troops of around 50 individuals, they inhabit evergreen and deciduous forests up to 2,000 meters above sea level. Like many monkeys, they rely mainly on leaves and fruits to survive.
This stream provides a year-round supply of water, along with the chance to snag a trapped seed or fruit washed from higher upstream. For those unwilling to bend down to drink, a submerged hand solves the problem. This mother appears to have found another source of food. While grooming reinforces social bonds and helps them to relax, combined with nitpicking, it also conjures up the odd tasty snack. After breakfast, the younger male macaques burn off energy. Play fighting isn't just about having fun or getting one over on your body. It's important practice, as one day these two could be competing for real over a female. This mother has decided to keep her distance from the Malay below. She's only recently given birth and is keen to protect her new baby. Morning dew on leaves enables the macaques to quench their thirst without having to come down from the trees. This lazy option often turns out to be the safest in more ways than one. This youngster has become separated from the main group. Rummaging through leaf litter may reveal the odd reward, but always being aware of what's around you is key to survival in macaque society. Chinese moccasins spend most of their time hunting close to rivers and streams. Members of the viper family, they're highly venomous. Local people call them the hundred pacer snake, as after being bitten, this is the maximum number of steps a person can take before dropping dead. A small monkey would be killed in an instant. Suddenly, an alarm goes out. One of the grown-ups has spotted the predator and alerts the entire troop. Retreating to the safety of the canopy is rule number one in macaque society, whenever danger calls. Even though monkeys aren't on this snake's menu, just a defensive bite would show little mercy. At higher altitudes, Tibetan macaques make full use of their thick fur whenever colder weather systems move in. But slightly further north, in Sichuan province, lives a creature with an even greater head for heights. At around 3,000 meters above sea level, southwest China's coniferous forests can suffer snow and frost for up to 280 days a year. During colder months, few humans venture into these secretive, inhospitable lands. And reports of mythical creatures offer another excuse to avoid these higher climbs.
These bizarre looking primates have been associated with the Yeti legend for centuries. Known as snub nosed monkeys, they're notorious for their human like bipedal walking. Combined with demonic sounding chatter, it's no wonder local people thought they were dealing with some kind of sinister being. A lack of nasal bones and upturned nostrils leaves little mystery to the origin of their common name. It's thought their flat muzzle evolved to avoid frostbite to an exposed fleshy nose. Snub-nosed monkeys are often found living at altitudes higher than any other primate apart from man. One group in northern Yunnan have been recorded at 4,700 meters above sea level. At these higher altitudes, temperatures can drop to below minus 40 degrees. But while other mammals retreat to the warmer valleys, snub-nosed monkeys have unrivaled access to these less hospitable zones. Leaping with forearms extended is the preferred way of traveling through trees. They are aerial specialists, often landing on two feet. Thick, shaggy fur provides the necessary cold weather insulation. Although leaves and buds are absent during winter, pine needles and tree bark still offer a nutritious meal. Despite the vast amount of food on offer, competition over the best twig is commonplace among the younger generation. But the adult males have far more important issues to quarrel over. Competition over females is a constant battle. Armed with oversized canine teeth, a full-on fight could be fatal. Fortunately, a truce is called. For now, at least. As the day comes to an end, it pays for everyone to have settled their differences. Huddling together is key to survival as nighttime temperatures drop even further. The lower altitude foothills of Yunnan province provide the perfect habitat for one of the world's best known ornamental trees. Around 90% of the world's rhododendron species originate from the Himalayan region. Along with providing a vast source of food for nectar-feeding sunbirds, the flowers help fuel another creature that spends most of its day off the ground.
Himalayan squirrels live at an elevation between 1,500 and 3,500 meters. Water droplets trapped among the petals quenches this individual's thirst. Although nuts and fruits make up the majority of its diet, insects taking refuge inside flowers are also taken. These secluded, temperate foothill forests are also home to one of the world's most elusive animals. Red pandas are just slightly larger than a domestic cat. They live a solitary life. Despite the name, Biologically, they're not related to giant pandas. They've recently been allocated their own family label, more closely related to weasels. Red pandas can't digest the cellulose found in most plants, so their diet is almost entirely made up of bamboo, a food their stomachs can just about manage. Because bamboo nutrition levels are relatively low, they spend around 13 hours a day feeding. After patrolling and scent marking his patch of forest, this male has some important work to do. To cope with cooler temperatures, red pandas' bodies are completely covered in fur, including the soles of their feet. This cat-like cleaning is one ritual that can't be rushed. Male territories are large, overlapping those of several females. However, this individual appears to have some company, but of the wrong sex. Red pandas are highly territorial and defend their patch of ground with vigor. The visiting Romeo suddenly realizes this is another male's domain and heads back the way he came. Being small-bodied and choosing to live alone has enabled China's red pandas to live a secretive life. However, in southwest China's lowland jungles, one giant creature, living in large groups, managed to evade detection for decades. This tropical forest is home to one of China's greatest secrets, the Asian elephant. Giant herds used to be common across China, roaming as far as Beijing. But this hidden valley in Yunnan province is the only place they survive. Asian elephants eat up to 150 kilograms of food a day and defecate up to 18 times in the same period. They play an important role in dispersing the seeds of many plant species. Asian elephants live in small groups containing six or seven adult females and their young. Their social structure is highly complex, with females living in tightly knit families that remain together for life. Elephants drink around 100 litres of water a day. Yet a visit to this forest pool satisfies another need, not just thirst. Blowing bubbles into the sludge at the bottom of the pond 
releases minerals such as calcium and magnesium, salts essential for their diet. The grown-ups finish their fill and move on. However, one youngster decides the fun isn't over just yet. This river is a favorite gathering point for many of the region's families. Bathing isn't just about keeping cool. It's high on the list when it comes down to pure playtime pleasure. Elephants are the architects of these forests. Although bamboo and grasses are preferred, tree leaves, lianas and saplings are also taken. This creates clearings, allowing light to reach the forest floor and nurture new growth. Of the thousands of elephants that once roamed across China, fewer than 300 remain all living here in Yunnan's secret forests. China's southwest supports the lives of many large creatures. However, millions of minuscule insects also call this tropical region home. Weaver ants get their name from the unique manner in which they construct their nests. As one group of adults pull living leaves together, another begin joining the leaf edges using a remarkable process. Because only the larvae of these ants produce silk, they are, in effect, used as glue guns. Held gently in the jaws of adults, the larvae are squeezed, forcing out a line of sticky silk along the leaf joins. This process continues until the entire ball-like structure is complete. Each nest takes around three days to complete and a colony of up to half a million ants can build more than a hundred, usually in low-level trees. Weaver ants are highly territorial and aggressively defend their territories against intruders. One predator, however, comes well prepared for their powerful bites. Despite its reptilian appearance, this creature is actually an insect-devouring nocturnal mammal. Known as a pangolin, its body is covered by hard, overlapping scales made of keratin, the same protein that forms human hair and fingernails. Often referred to as scaly anteaters, pangolins thrive on a diet of termites and ants. Their vision is poor, so they rely on a strong sense of smell to track down their prey. This individual gets wind of the weaver ant's nest and moves in. Pangolins are excellent climbers. 
the ants stand little chance of escape against a 40 centimetre long tongue covered in sticky saliva. Attacking the intruder's head is futile. Its tough armour-plated skin can't be penetrated. Nostrils and ears can also be closed and thick lids protect its eyes. Pangolins have no teeth, so the ants are swallowed whole. Their thick, muscular internal stomach walls are lined with spines made of keratin, which helps crush and mash their meals. Pangolins can consume up to 200,000 ants a night. Fortunately for their intended victims, each raid lasts no more than a minute or two. China's secluded southwest is renowned for its vast array of conical hills. Formed after prehistoric seafloor sediment was raised to the surface, this weathered limestone landscape takes on a new name, Karst. Limestone dissolves in rainwater, and this erosion of rock is most apparent in Yunnan province where enormous caverns and sinkholes form one of the least explored landscapes in the world. Trickles of rainwater seeping through the porous rock eventually converge to form vast underground rivers. These fast flowing bodies of water continue to carve out even larger caves. Ancient stalactites adorn the ceilings while their opposites continue to rise up from the limestone floor. The rivers eventually settle as they approach the water table. These deep, dark underground pools are the home of a unique creature that has evolved to shun light. Blind cave fish are born with vision, but by the time they're fully grown, their eyes are completely covered by skin. China is thought to have more species of cave fish than anywhere else in the world. Of the 70 odd species, almost half are found here in Yunnan. The entrance to this cave is home to a creature that would be lost without the guidance of light. At dusk, more than 200,000 cave swifts take shelter in the cracks and fissures. But as they're unable to see in the dark, they never venture too far in. Deeper inside the cavern, another winged resident is just beginning to rise. Bats use a series of high-pitched squeaks to navigate their way in complete darkness. These nocturnal hunters also rely on this method of echolocation to catch their prey. While the majority of bat species make do with a diet of insects, the oversized feet of this individual point to a much larger prey. The bat pinpoints the slightest ripple on the water surface and swoops in. Its oversized claws hook the target clean out of the water, 
allowing the rest of its body to remain completely dry. Ricket's big-footed bat is the only bat in Asia to specialize in catching fish. Southwest China's caves don't just provide secret sanctuary for relatively small creatures. They're also home to one of the rarest primates on the planet. Francoise Langers are found in just two provinces, living among the cast limestone caverns. Living in tightly knit groups of around 12 individuals, they spend a great deal of time grooming one another. This back scratching not only reinforces social bonds, it's the ideal way for a monkey to relax. Francoise langers rely on a diet of leaves and buds to survive. Their specialized stomachs break down the leaf cellulose which many other primates are unable to digest. Babies are born with orange fur. This eventually turns black at around six months old. Males play no part in caring for the young, whereas all the adult females share the responsibility of looking after any newborns. These precipitous cliffs would test the nerve of most experienced climbers. However, the langurs appear completely unfazed. They learn to grip before they can walk. So scaling vertical walls is child's play. Water, seeping out of the limestone, not only quenches thirst, it also provides a valuable source of minerals absorbed from the porous rock. As dusk draws in, the langurs head toward the safety of their underground refuge. Although large predators such as leopards are today seldom seen, this ancestral habit has other benefits. During colder months, the monkeys head even deeper into the cave system, where the temperature is constant and relatively warm. Southwest China's rich diversity of wildlife comes as a result of a fortunate flaw in the region's geological makeup. Millions of years ago, when the Indian continent collided with mainland Asia, the world's largest mountain range was born. Since then, the Indian tectonic plate has continued to drive north, forcing the Himalayas to rise almost 9,000 meters high, along a line approximately 2,500 kilometers long. Few creatures survive at such high altitudes. However, at the Himalayas' eastern end in southwest China, the mighty mountain range suddenly loses stature. Rather than being forced upwards, the eastern end of the ridge is buckled, forming a series of gently sloping valleys, turned clockwise through almost 90 degrees.
while the equatorial sun warms these south-facing slopes. The gorges also act as channels for the moist monsoon winds coming in from the Indian and Pacific Oceans. On hitting the Himalayas, the winds condense, dropping tons of rain, which fuels the southwest's tropical valleys. Some parts of Yunnan province receive in excess of two and a half thousand millimeters of rain each year. This natural resource is essential for growing one of the most important foods in the whole of Asia. The Chinese have been cultivating rice for over 8,000 years. It takes approximately 5,000 liters of water to produce each kilo of grain. These rice terraces in Yunnan province are some of the oldest human structures in China. Locals have created a complex system of channels to divert water from the forested mountains to these lower altitude fields. Virtually every square centimeter of land has been claimed for rice cultivation. These man-made meadows are the perfect habitat for many wetland residents. As dusk approaches, one amphibian makes its presence known. Male paddy frogs call out to attract a nearby female but their mating songs quite often draw in the wrong kind of attention. Chinese pond herons survive on a diet of small fish, aquatic invertebrates, and frogs. Growing up to seven centimeters long, these amphibians are one of the largest prey items the herons can stomach. Fortunately, they can only swallow one frog at a time, giving other potential meals the chance to hop away. Not all amphibians are on the pond heron's menu. In southwest China's secluded mountain streams is a creature too large for most predators to tackle. Weighing in at over 11 kilograms and just under two meters in length. This bizarre animal is actually a type of oversized newt. Known as a Chinese giant salamander, it's the world's largest amphibian. Surviving on a diet of fish and crustaceans, this creature never leaves the clear stream water. 
Undisturbed, it can live for more than 50 years. Further downstream in Yunnan's southern valleys, the rivers become calm and begin to swell. This sheltered, fertile region is home to the Dai people, self-declared protectors of the forest. Treating the trees and land around them as sacred, the Dai keep exotic gardens full of flowers and fruit. Banana crops grow well in the region's tropical climate. Their huge flowers are rich in nectar, a magnet to sweet-toothed insects such as hornets. But these oversized wasps don't just rely on sticky syrup to survive. They're ferocious hunters too. A grasshopper would make the perfect dinner for young hornet grubs back at the nest. However, this particular meal may come with a catch. Dai villagers take advantage of this predator's instincts. This mission requires a steady hand. The hornet's six millimeter long sting can be deadly. The hornet finishes cutting off a section of grasshopper to carry back to its nest. But now the hunter has become the hunted. The trailing feather not only slows the hornet down, it acts as a flag for the villagers to follow. Finally, the nest's location is revealed. Smoke forces the hornets to abandon their home. The larvae-laden nest is now safe to be harvested. Fattened hornet grubs are a rich delicacy in Dai society. China's southwestern forests offer sanctuary and protection to many hidden creatures. And although one in particular may seldom be seen, its distinctive call echoes throughout these remote valleys. Black-crested gibbons are one of the world's most endangered primates. These forest mountains are the only place they remain in China. Unlike their jet-black partners, adult females are a light golden color. Most other species of gibbon are monogamous, living in pairs with their young. However, black-crested gibbons are unique 
as their groups can contain multiple breeding females. They effectively live in troops. This baby appears to be just a few hours old. Weighing around half a kilo, the youngster will rely on its mother's milk for the next two years. In around eight years' time, it too will be able to have offspring of its own and maintain the dawn chorus of Yunnan's secret valleys. Southwest China's abundant wildlife remains virtually untouched by human hands. Even when man and creatures do come face to face, it seems harmonious relationships can be forged. For over a thousand years, fishermen living along the Lijiang River have relied on some expert assistance to survive. Cormorants specialize in catching fish. Trained from six months old, these adult birds know they have a job to do. A loose noose around their throats prevents the cormorants from swallowing the larger fish. Anything smaller, they get to keep. Slapping the water surface is thought to encourage the birds to begin their mission. although a helping hand is sometimes needed. On a good day, a fisherman and his hunting partners can land up to 50 kilos of fish. However, despite giving up their catch, the cormorants aren't stupid. They're said to be able to count how many fish they've handed over. After approximately seven sorties, they down tools until rewarded.
it's quite clear who's in charge of this unique human-animal relationship. Southwest China is a secret paradise. Life-fueling valleys play host to a vast array of creatures, many found nowhere else on Earth. The region's unique geography not only sustains food and water, it also provides protection from the extreme neighboring climates. While the world's largest population and fastest growing economy continues to expand, China's secret garden remains a unique and magical land. <laughs>